right, welcome to the EKG guy if this is your first time. You know, what I wanna do now is go through some of our questions in the course and really to make sure we're approaching things with the right framework. So this is the, the EKG guy course, okay? And this is the ultimate EKG breakdown. So many of you may have already the online access, okay? Now it's these books here that some of you may have. So let's just take a look at those here. So you may have the bigger version, okay? Or the pocket version, either one. Now in the bigger version, this is gonna be the second lesson we're looking at, okay, in the beginning. So the first lesson here looks at cardiac anatomy and circulation. We're gonna look at the electrical conduction system uh, of the heart. So open to that page if you have the book um, or you, know, you may have already listened to the video. So if you go to the course, okay, it would be the second one. So the electrical conduction system of the heart. And Right now, we want to do is just look at those questions, okay? So you may have already listened to the video, all right? Remember that the learning objectives in this lesson are uh, one, okay, to identify the components of the electrical conduction system of the heart, uh, two, to describe the pacemaker cells and their role in the impulse initiation, and three, to identify general rates of pacemaker cells at various locations in the heart, okay? So throughout the conduction system, there's general intrinsic rates of different pacemaker cells and we'll look at those here, okay? Now, these are the questions you can see that I've already uh, gone through some of these. Uh, let's see if we can kind of remove them to start over, okay? And as we go through them, we'll, we'll highlight them. So this first question here looks at the electrical conduction system, and can you label these areas appropriately? Okay, so that's the first question. The second question looks at uh, what is considered the normal intrinsic rate range of the sinus node in adults? Okay, so those are the two questions we want to address here. Now, before doing that, what I want to do is look at the conduction system, okay? And just to review that, remember that the electrical conduction system of the heart, the main goal is to create and to transmit these impulses throughout the conduction system. We think of the conduction system of the heart as the highway, the fastest pathway, and the ideal pathway. So if you look at this heart, this depiction here, okay, uh, what we can see is you have your sign, your right atrium. So you, here's your right atrium, okay. Then you have your left atrium, okay. You have your right ventricle, and then you have your left ventricle. And where the impulses begin are in the right atrium. Here's your superior vena cava, okay. Here's your inferior vena cava, IVC, and here up in the upper right atrium is your sinal atrial node, okay? The SA node where normal impulses begin in the heart. So from your SA node, what you have are these internal pathways. So you have an anterior one, you have a middle one, and you have a posterior internodal bundle there, okay? Then you have what's called the Bachmann bundle, okay? And so that is going to the left atrium. When we think of interatrial blocks, that's the part, that's the area that tends to be affected. And so as the impulses travels through the atria, it then comes to the AV node, okay? And notice here's your AV node that sits also in your right atrium. So again, in your right atrium. And then from the AV node, you have your his bundle, okay? And as your his bundle from the AV junction, you have now you're going to conduct the impulse to the ventricle. So you have your right bundle branch, okay? And your right bundle branch innervates the right ventricle, okay? You have a left bundle branch that innervates the left ventricle, okay? And two of the key fascicles that come off the left bundle branch are the left anterior fascicle, okay? And the left anterior fascicle innervates the anterior and superior portions of the left ventricle. Whereas you also have a left posterior fascicle, okay? The left posterior fascicle um, is something that's less vulnerable compared to the left anterior fasc uh, fascicle. And the left posterior fascicle innervates both the inferior and the posterior aspects of the left ventricle. And so from those fascicles, from the right bundle branch, you have these Purkinje's, the ventricular Purkinje fiber network uh, that then innervates the ventricular myocardium. And that's how the impulse uh, then travels, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So just to recap, let's see uh, if we can kind of write these out again. So we have here the SA node or the sinus node, okay? So let's, maybe we can make this smaller. Oh, 
a second. So we'll make this a move this over here. And let's just erase these marks here. Okay. So erase that mark and we will start here. So we have our SA node. Okay. Our sinus node is the beginning of our conduction system. We said that's here up in our right atrium. And then from the sinus node, we have these internodal pathways. And that include, included the anterior one, the posterior in the middle, okay? And then you also have the Bachman bundle. Okay, and then from there, so that's innervation of the atria. And from there, you have the AV node, okay? Then the His bundle. And then from the His bundle, you have a right bundle branch that innervates the right ventricle, so the RV, okay? And you have the left bundle branch that then subdivides into two main fascicles, the left anterior and the left posterior fascicle, okay? And these innervate the left ventricle. So that's the main conduction system there, okay? So the, the key features that you should uh, be aware of. So if we look at this question here, can you label these portions of the conduction system? Well, we said that the up here in the upper right atrium is our sinus node, okay? The one, then you have your internodal pathways and going to the left atrium, you have your Bachman bundle. So we can place that one there, okay? Big stick there, let's see. Okay, let's see if the Bachman bundle will go there first. Okay, and then we'll add the sinus node. And then from there, you have the AV node, okay? Again, notice that the AV node sits in that right atrium. And finally, you have your his bundle, okay? So if we check that, okay, it should check out. So that is actually the correct way. And then notice you have your uh, bundle branches, the right and the left one uh, that then go through. Now, the second question here, is what is considered the normal intrinsic rate uh, range of the sinus node in adults, okay? So we're focusing on adults. In our pediatric course, we look at the pediatric, then the rates tend to be a little faster at the younger ages until they start getting older, okay? And so the few things you have to know is that the pacemaker cell, so what do we mean by that? That was the, one of the second learning objectives. The pacemaker cell is the one that dictates the rate of the, of the actually heart of the conduction system, okay? It's the fastest pacemaker of the heart, and that is the one that controls the, uh, the heart rate, okay? And you have to also realize that the fastest starts up in the right atrium. So let's now go back to our conduction system here, okay? And I'll erase some of the things that we've already discussed, okay? And so the thing you have to know here is that the fastest uh, pacemaking cell is the one that dictates the rate of the heart. So that's what we mean by pacemaker cell. So up here in our right atrium, this is our sinus node, okay? And all of these different areas from top to bottom have a different intrinsic rates. And so with the sinus node, this one has a rate between 60 and 100 beats per minute in adults, okay? So those are the intrinsic rates that we tend to think of about in adult sinal atrial node, the sinus node. As you start to get lower, okay, for instance, in the atria, it's a, it's a bit lower, okay? So let's say in the atria that it is between, say, 55 and 60 beats per minute, okay? Or maybe around there. You may have ectopic foci that have that intrinsic rate. And then as you get lower, okay, into this AV junctional region, you start to think of rates between 40 and 60 beats per minute. All right, and as you get lower uh, down into the ventricles, start to think that the intrinsic rate of this area is between 20 and 40 beats per minute. So that's in general what we should think about. So up in the top in the sinus node, the atria, think of 60 to 100 in adults. As you get to the AV junctional region, think of 40 to 60 and lower 20 to 40 beats per minute. So those are general cutoffs that are important because as you start to differentiate different rhythms, uh, these are important. Uh, different intrinsic rates to be about, to be aware of. So if we look at the question here, what is considered the normal intrinsic rate range of uh, the sinus node in adults? Well, here's your sinus node, and we said it's 60 to 100 beats per minute, so it should be 
uh, this answer here. Okay, so that is in fact the correct answer. So when we look at the other ones, 20 to 40 beats per minute, that first option would be here in the ventricles. Okay, 40 to 60, we think of the AV junction. Okay, and then the 40 to 80 tends to be one that was meant to throw you off there. So the correct answer is 60 to 100 beats per minute um, in adults. Now, remember, we said that the conduction system has a backup mode. Okay, and what that means is if the sinus node fails, okay, or the sinus node is not hitting this 60 beats per minute, okay, you may have somewhere, say in the AV junctional region or even in the atria that are conducting at faster rates and take over pacemaking function. So if the sinus node cannot keep up at that 60 beats per minute, okay, maybe you have sinus node dysfunction, you may have an AV junctional ectopic focus that is firing around, say, 55 beats per minute and ends up taking over pacemaking function. So if the sinus node fails, you may have the AV junctional region that takes over. If the AV junctional region fails, you may have a ventricular focus, some ventricular focus that starts to take over pacemaking function, okay? Now, having these uh, backup systems are important, just like different areas of the body. We have a lot of compensatory mechanisms and the body is quite resilient. So the same thing holds true in the conduction system of the heart. So you have these backup, these safety nets that are there to capture if higher uh, areas of the heart fail, okay? Now it's not good to have these lower areas conducting because you know if you they're not very reliable is one thing. Another thing is, you know, if you're pumping at that slow rate, you may not have enough cardiac output that's actually perfusing the rest of the body, the brain well, and patients may become symptomatic, okay? So that's another uh, important thing to be aware of. So, just to recap, okay, so if you've gone through that, the video, okay, it's available there. Uh, the, the key points here are identifying the components of the electrical conduction system. So hopefully you were able to uh, see that to describe the pacemaker cells and their role in impulse initiation and propagation through the conduction system. And then to identify these general rates in the pacemaker uh, cells at various locations. So sinus node, think of that 60 to 100 beats per minute. Remember that range. Remember the AV junctional region, that 40 to 60 beats per minute. And then in any ventricular topic focus, it generally has an intrinsic rate between 20 and 40 beats per minute. Okay, well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Mm -hmm.